you been wanting to paint dreamy animals, but maybe you're just not sure how to get started? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to paint a sweet, whimsical field mouse or harvest mouse in one afternoon using watercolor and gouache. We'll start with simple supplies, go through the inspiration gathering process, sketching, and then painting. By the end, you'll have a delicate, sweet mouse surrounded by wildflowers that's ready to frame or ready for you to turn into a design that's licensable for you some products. Hi, I'm Ginger Devereaux. I'm a surface artist and illustrator in Vancouver, Canada. I create dreamy and enchanted artwork that's used around the world on products like fabric, stationery, children's wear, and greeting cards. Carrying people into dreamy, beautiful, imaginary places is what I love to do most, and I'm really happy to share this with you today. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. What we'll do today is get inspired, sketch, choose supplies, and then we'll paint. My first way to get inspired is from taking lots of walks in nature and looking at what's around me, collecting pictures, taking home mementos. Also, when I travel, I love to look at architecture, food, textiles, rugs, anything cultural that gives me some sort of visual reference. The next thing I do is create a mood board. I pick out words like delicate, whimsy, airy, dreamy, and sometimes I pin things on the wall in a corner of my studio, and other times I use a Pinterest board, like this. Here's my board. I have many, many categories for all kinds of inspiration. The next thing I do is choose my colors. I have a board called Colors I Love on Pinterest, and I usually pull from that. I highly recommend doing a dive into this. Set the timer for 30 minutes so you don't end up in a five-hour deep dive. Okay, so the next step in your process will be to gather together a few images of field mice that really light your fancy and um, just look at them. Look at what the details are that are interesting to you. Look at the overall shapes um, that make up the form of the animal, the colors, and pull those aside so you can look at them and, and do rough sketches from them. The first thing I wanna look for is is it someone's photography that they've poured their heart into? Okay, then I don't want to steal their composition. I don't want to copy them. So I'm going to be careful about that. This one I just really love when their hands are, are holding something that's just so precious. And the look on this one's face is adorable. I also like the coloring on this. It's really warm, that kind of like rust mixed with ochre. Same thing with this guy, the, the little hands held together like that. It's really sweet. Okay, let's sketch. We're ready. So I'm going to show you some of the loose sketches that I did of field mice. Just it took five minutes, looked at a, a number of different things. Very loose, very kind of wonky. <laughs> and I did it in pen. Uh, when I when I do this initial kind of brainstorming, I usually sketch in pen. This is my favorite one, Uniball Vision Needle. I do it in pen so that I'm not tempted to just get caught up in perfecting and erasing and getting into detail. That's not the point of this. The point is to sort of brainstorm and get an idea of where I want to go with it. Did another page of looser ones. You can kind of see the motion. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what does it look like when the mouse is leaning in or leaping or, you know, looking up? <laughs> What kind of florals will I include with this? It's just kind of playing around with ideas. Think about what simple shapes could I use to, to, to sort of simplify the process. Boil it down to something really minimal. From there, tried a bunch of them. Realized that some of them just look really sad. <laughs> That's not what I want. <laughs> just try everything and mess around. And in the end, I kind of liked this one. I thought it was cute and playful and kind of like innocent and then I, there's something about this that I kind of like too and then I just loosely brainstorm my idea of putting a bunch of foliage just around so that's those are the two that I've kind of landed on that one and this one as my points of inspiration so now that I've done my brainstorming I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start sketching out the mouse on my paper that I'm gonna paint on so I'm going to start with some simple shapes really loosely, this time in pencil. Um, I like how that last sketch that I showed you had like a little plump little body. 
makes it seem younger and more innocent. And I remember that its head kind of was a bit triangular in shape. And that its ears were pretty big, kind of looped up. Uh, that's part that's going to be darker. And it had a little cute little nose. And a little mouth. Don't know if this is exactly accurate, but it's kind of how I remember it. Had some big whiskers. And its eyes were really kind of cute. And I remember that its hands were kind of like like this, kind of coming together, which made it really cute. Now I don't this isn't gonna look super realistic, but I'll just give it, I, I remember that it had about four fingers, so I'll give it four fingers and some cute little arms. And then it kind of had fur, fur hair <laughs> coming down over the arms. So these are the kind of details when you're looking at your inspiration images. You can go back and look at them too if you forget. Um, it's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to pay attention to. And I, I'm going to do this because I wanted to remember that the hair or fur kind of moved in this neat little pattern. And then its little feet were coming out really adorably. <laughs> kind of wonky. And then the tail could just be hanging down below. I think that's really cute. I like that. I'm going to go with that. Next, we'll look at supplies before we dive into painting. I'm a huge fan of using what you have, finding inexpensive supplies, and mixing and matching to find whatever colors and textures light you up. I say there are no rules. Do whatever interests you and put anything you want into your art. Before we dive into painting, I'll give you a little tour of the supplies that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to start off with some basic watercolor paper. This one is fluid watercolor paper, hot press. Yeah, hot press. Uh, you could use cold press, you could use a sketchbook, you could use, I uh, like this paint on Clairefontaine um, mixed media paper. It's color, it has different colors, different textures. You could paint on an envelope from the recycle bin or a paper bag from the grocery store. <laughs> it does not have to be fancy or expensive. I'm just gonna have a few size brushes here. This one is golden maple size eight. I think I got that one on Amazon. I've got a little size two brush. I just like that for details sometimes. This one I believe is a size four. No idea what brand it is. And my more recent thing is this um, glass dip pen. I've been really enjoying it, so I can uh, show you a few of the delicate lines with that today. For watercolors today, I'm just going to dabble around in a few different sets. The first one is Gansai Tambi, I guess. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right there. It's from Japan, and this is what it looks like. It's giant! <laughs> But it has just such a rich and creamy texture and the colors, oh, they're so bright. And then my go-tos, I'm going to be using, this is Prima Pastel Dreams. These are some of my go-to colors. They're also really creamy, um, maybe a little bit oily, I'd say. Um, and then this is the last one I'll probably use the odd color from here today and it's Meaden, maybe from Germany as well, I'm not sure. Um, and again, luscious colors. I really love the greens and the blues in this one. So I'll just mix and match and grab what I need. Oh, and the last thing I'll probably use a little bit of is, I don't know how to pronounce this, Colero Pearl Colors. Um, anyway, they, they pop out and you can just 
use them like a watercolor with your with some water and a brush so that's nice I like the gold in that okay uh, I also have a little jar of water I have a pencil any pencil will do I happen to use Stadler 0.5 millimeter I really like this one I've been drawing with this for 10 maybe 15 years and just an eraser for the watercolors I like to have a little thing that I mix them in so right now this is the thing I happen to be using it's just <laughs> really basic you could use a plate or a dish um, a lid from a yogurt container anything really all right my friends we've done the hard work now we are ready to paint so to get started I get my water out get my brush wet and then I pull over my paints and choose. I've at this point usually chosen already which uh, colors I think I'm going to use. So on the Meaden set or on any set that you have, I'm going to go for yellow ochre and deep yellow ochre. These two here, those two there. I really like that tone. And then I'll just start mixing in little bits of brown and maybe gray and then cream and white. And I'll be thinking about the light. So for me, the light will probably come from this top corner. So everything I will do will probably be a bit lighter on this side and the shadows will be a bit on this side. Also, this guy has more of like a white little belly. So keep that in mind too. So here we go. Get the brush wet and start to get some paint. Get it all nice. And juicy and you can start by putting paint first and then dip your brush in the water and pull that paint out or you can start with just water and get this nice and wet over here And then I'll get some paint and drop it in and it kind of does the does the work for you and it often results in some really neat kind of texture when it dries get a bit more paint drop it in I'm gonna do his ears next and let that sort of soak a bit I like that color I'm going to bring that into the ears. Keep a roll of paper towels nearby and then just dab something if it drops. Not the end of the world if I don't catch it in time. And I wipe my brush every now and then. Now what I want to do is I'm going to dry it with my Pro Heater. If I have time, I'll just put it aside and start working on another piece while it dries because I really love how um, when you let it dry naturally, the texture will be, often be quite stunning. Like there's little surprises that happen. I'm just going to drop a little bit more paint in there. Sorry. <laughs> but every now and then you just have to use what you got. And if you don't have time, then you can go ahead and dry it and we'll see you back. Okay. First little layer is done drying. You can also use a hair dryer. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that these watercolor blocks, that is where it does come in handy to use these because they're, this is a, a cheaper one. And so it's, only, it's not glued down on the sides, but it is glued down mostly <laughs> kind of coming off on the top and on the bottom. And you cut it off with a palette knife at the end. And the great thing is, is when you are drying it or if it's drying naturally, the paper won't buckle up and wrinkle as much as if you're just using a loose piece of paper. However, I use loose pieces of paper all the time too. And sometimes I have to like grab everything that's heavy near me to hold all down the corners because <laughs> it's buckling so badly. And in the end it all works out. So it's not a big deal. Now I'm gonna get my little brush. There we go. And get some water. And let's go ahead and bring some other detailing in. First I'll use this deep yellow ochre and then I use the browns. And just start adding in some of my detailing. I'm 
going to turn my block as I work. Don't ever be shy to do that. And if it, my brush got too mucky, I'm just going to rinse it out and start fresh. Wipe it with the cloth to get a brand new start and then get some water, get some paint and start over. You can see I get I end up getting nice thin lines when I start over like that. It can get they can start to get really thick and not what I'm after. So it's worth it to just stop every now and then do that. I'm gonna use this these two colors from the Ganzai set. And this I'll often, if I want to mix some colors together, and I'm not shy about, you know, using my brush on one block and then another block. You can't keep everything all perfect and tidy. It just doesn't really work that way. So let's fill in these little feet. Here's I go I'm going to dip water and pull it out so that it's dark on one side and light on the other side. Pick up some more of my color and carry on. And I'm going to actually go in with that same color and just put a little bit of detail around the edge of the foot. And it's nice that the last color that I put on there is still a bit wet, so it just blends in. I'm going to go in around the face. Go in around the edges of the outside edges of the ears as well. Light creamy one on the top. This zone here feels like it needs some a pop of light, and so this is where every now and then I'll, well not every now and then, quite often, I pull in little bits of gouache or acrylic craft paint or whatever's handy. So I'll just use put a little bit of this. Use the size four brush. Get it wet. Bring a little bit of water into the gouache. This gouache can act like watercolor if you put a lot of water or it can act like acrylic if you put less water. So it's kind of fun that way. It has a lot of flexibility. So I'm going to start adding in my highlights. Feels like we need some lighter parts there, up here. So the face was the nose was pink, so let's start out by making the nose pink, and I think I actually want to give it quite a pink nose, so I'm going to pull in my Prima watercolors, and go very pink on the nose. Oh, that's so cute. And the little mouth, I think, should be pink, too. And now that I see the pink, I think I'm going to put a little bit into the feet. Just needs that little taste of pink. Oh, that's cute. And in the ears. Just a little bit. <laughs> okay. And that'll dry and probably need like a bit more. But for now, I really like that. And then the nose felt dark like it felt kind of like this region had a little bit more dark to it so 
So there I'm just adding in a bit more of that hair, the delicate hairs on the face. And then I'm going to make the lower face lighter. I'll grab some of my wash, it's just thicker, and I'm going to take it in and give him little, or her little white hairs on the chinny chin chin. I think that these need to continue nice and light up around the eyes. So it feels like the eyes need to come to life now. So I'm going to try the dark gray to start and see if it's dark enough. So it's like a deep, deep gray. Now I think I'm going to pull out my glass dip pen for this and you just stick it in the nice juicy wet watercolor. You see that? And it just soaks it up. You can see it's soaked it up. And now we can get very fine, careful edges. Oh, my paper is so warped. There we go. You just dip this into the water, the glass dip pen until you can see that there's no more watercolor in it and then just wipe it off. That's it. Simple. A little bit of Or what did I use? Oh, I remember now. I think I used this. Did I use this? <laughs> it's always good to remember what you used. Let's see. And at the same time, it doesn't really matter either. You can always mix and match and add more, and it always ends up working out with watercolor. a lot of flexibility. You not have to worry about things being perfect or getting things just right. It's forgiving because there's just so many neat little surprises that can happen along the way that make it interesting. That's the I think that's the beauty of it. I think that's why I'm drawn to it is it's less about controlling everything and more about letting things happen. And I really I really enjoy that. Probably something that we all need to practice. <laughs> Letting things happen. I want to keep this fairly thick and I'm only going to put, make sure there's no water dripping down there. I'm only going to put it on the very tip so I can keep it nice and fine so it doesn't get really thick. I really want the light to be hitting from this side. I find that light and shadow are a really big deal. It just, it like somehow brings everything to life and makes it pop when it gets a bit of light and shadow. It can be a little bit flat until, until you get that piece in there. And it's not complicated. You don't have to understand all the principles. It can be really simple. You can just imagine the light is coming from one side and put more light on that side and put more dark on the other side and boom. So this is um, not a purest watercolor. I think when I started today I had planned to just do watercolor but this is just what happens you just go with what feels right in the moment and whatever supply is on hand and feels like the one is the one <laughs> and I love that okay so I'm starting to really like this I need a little bit of light on top of his foot Needs a bit more white on the face. Okay, so now I want to go in with my fine detail brush and get a little bit of gouache and just start adding 
the fine details. So a little bit of white reflection on the eye. And I want to do like where I can see the pencil lines. I actually don't mind pencil lines. Some people it really bothers them. But I, I'm going to do, I'm going to fix some of them. Okay, so I'm going to take this slightly darker shade of our peach, pinky peach, and then I think I'm going to use some just brown by itself, and I'm going to put a little bit more contrast up here on the ears. Anywhere where you would expect some shadow, I'm going to amp it up. It is now time to fill in this branch and then add some little florals. Let's just see. I wanted to let it go really light. I'll start out with some stems. This is just sap green deep. Glass dip pen. I dip it in there and let it soak it up. Now let's start adding some florals. So these are really nice for this is really nice for fine lines. So there's something to get us started. And now we can just start adding flowers and blooms and things. So I'll use my bigger brush. I really like this delicate purple. It's like a lilac. I think I'm going to mix that with a little bit of brown and just, just, just to kind of make it so it's a little more neutral. Got a little bit of brown. There. That's more like what I'm going for. It's just like a slightly more gentle, not quite as bright. And I can start with some of these by just adding the bloom or I can rinse out my brush and start by using water only and now grab some of the paint and pop it in and that will dry in its own unique way. And it can be fun to let the stem bleed. That one's actually a bit too wet to really, there. It can be fun to let it bleed in at the end. You just touch it and it'll bleed in. Let's grab some of that. Really pretty all by itself. I don't even think I need to mix anything. It'd be like a pop of color. Let's give it some wildflower yellow bits. I often do threes of things. I think it's pleasing. And I just want to do some darker leaves. I think that would look really pretty. Just to have some kind of watery. You see how I don't uh, worry about making it perfect? Like, I actually really like that when there's little parts that maybe aren't perfectly filled in. I find that really pleasing. I find it 
I don't know, I guess it's back to that human thing where it just feels more human. It's a little more raw, a little more wild. And you can see how some of these are starting to draw, dry. Like I think that's gonna look really pretty when it dries. Maybe that one too. This is lemonade, I think. I'm gonna do a few little delicate flowers. So I have enough contrast, is there enough dark and light, are there pops of colors, is there enough range of sizes of things? Is the composition pleasing? Do we like having the mouse on the branch with the foliage all around loosely? I'm just dipping my brush in the water and getting it wet. And now I will get some paint. And drop it in. very thin lines. I'm going to just dip just the tip of the brush so it doesn't get too um, heavy with water and grab up a little bit of paint at the tip. If I've got too much, I'll just wipe it off. And then And a lot of it is just going by feel, right? Some of it is design principles of hierarchy or um, composition, and tension and lock and asymmetry versus symmetry. But a lot of it is just what are you drawn to do and follow that impulse. That's how I work. And it can get overworked. It can get too busy and that's okay, you know? You can edit it down digitally. You can do your next one differently. Or if you're a maximalist, you can delight in how busy it is. Little stems. We'll let that dry and then we'll add some whiskers. So when I'm adding in these little details, I just make a little L basically to fill in the corner. And it just gives a little bit of definition. It's just a little trick. the whiskers. I think I'll do, just do those in pencil. Probably should have waited to the end to do them all together. See if I can get them right over top of the original ones I did. <laughs> hmm. 
There's a little whiskered fella. Now I will take Posca paint pen. Shake it up. And put a little dot in the middle of my turquoise flowers. A little center. One last thing that I'm realizing is that I don't really love the way it's so defined here and then it's not really defined at all here. So I'm just looking at it and thinking, well, I could leave it and I'm sure it would be fine. Or I could go in with a little bit of these soft colors and I could see what happens. <laughs> So that's what I'll do. I'll just put a little bit of this over top and just see what I think. I'll just mix these two together. This is where I'm gonna bring in these Colero pearl colors. Okay, and now we're going to put the very last finishing touches on. So um, I'm going to use a little bit more white gouache. And I'm going to use this um, not such a pointy brush, just get it just a tad bit wet. And then I'm going to dip it straight into the gouache and not get it watery. And then I'm going to add centers to these flowers. I actually feel like a little bit more black around the eyes would be good. And then a, a little bit more detailing of um, light on the eyes. So I'm just going to use my Posca paint pen. And I'm just going to give the eyes just a little bit more. Um, I think they do need to be blacker and just a little bit bigger. have to be careful though, otherwise they'll become creepy. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my really skinny brush and pick up a little bit of the white. And I'm going to try for white on multiple places and see if that feels like it captures the, uh, the light. And there you have it. Now we have our delicate field mouse surrounded by a field of flowers. It feels whimsical. It feels sweet, delicate, romantic, feminine, all the good things. It's ready to frame as is, or you can scan it in and turn it into an illustration for a greeting card, edit it out all the little icons and turn it into a repeat pattern for fabric and maybe wallpaper. I don't know if anyone would want a mouse <laughs> on wallpaper, but who knows? Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would love if you'd share your painting that you made with me today on Instagram using the hashtag whimsicalartwithginger. You can tag me at Ginger Deverell so I can cheer you on too. I've also included a PDF of all the slides from today's tutorial. You can download it below this video and keep it for reference and perhaps it will inspire you to continue on and create even more dreamy animals. Please leave me a like and if you want to see more videos like this you can subscribe to my channel. Also I'd love it if you drop in the comments down below what you want to see next. Thanks again for watching. Have a beautiful creative day.